Hello, everyone. That's, that's too early for that. Um, <clears throat> I suppose we are all developers here, uh, and I'm, I work from SUSE, and I'm here today to talk to you about the SUSE Developer Program. It's a, it's a newly started initiative from SUSE, and I hope you find it interesting and you can uh, collaborate and help us and be part of the community. So just to give you a little bit of an introduction, why are developers important for SUSE? Uh, well, if you think about how many developers there are in the world, you, you may think that we, are in, we have enough. Uh, there was a study conducted, uh, and it looks like we are 25 million in the world, which sounds quite a lot, and still we are not enough. Uh, the reason why we are not enough is because the amount of complexity that each one of us is facing every day is growing and growing and growing. Uh, applications and tools, ecosystems in general, becoming much more complex. We are keep adding abstraction layers to facilitate uh, interoperability, uh, and sometimes just because it's uh, fun to have abstractions. Um, and also, uh, with the uh, adoption of the real DevOps uh, lifecycle, we are doing a lot of automation. And automation requires integration, and it requires work and development. So we're not just uh, getting less to do. We're actually getting more stuff to do. And still, interestingly enough, um, in recent years, everything is about the cloud. Everything runs in the cloud, and there are new technologies out there that are even for developers running into the cloud. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but there is a new, fairly new tool called Eclipse Shea. Uh, for those who are familiar with the Eclipse IDE, Eclipse Shea is the exact same, but it runs into the cloud. It's quite amazing, and it, it, it's, a, it's a brand new feeling and experience that you can have. So SUSE, because of all this, decided to invest into the uh, developers and create a program around developers. Currently, there are three people full-time assigned to this. Uh, one is me, just in the middle picture. The other, the other two, one is Ferenc Zekli, is based in Finland. Uh, and the other one is Tim Hirnich, he's uh, based in Germany. And we're basically the, the developer relationship team. Um, developer relations as such uh, is a team that has been quite an important team in, in many different companies in our, in our industry for quite some time now. In fact, if you look around and um, you know, you're really interested in uh, developers' programs and uh, what's um, like in, in, Andreas was talking about NVIDIA before, for example, NVIDIA has a developer program, uh, Microsoft has a developer program, Cisco has a developer program, um, and they all try to basically help developers uh, to have a, a better development experience on their tools or with their tools or for their tools. So what is our uh, idea? Well. First of all, uh, developers like technology. So the first thing that we are, are addressing is a superior developer experience. Being that uh, programming language specific, like uh, imagine Python or Go these days, right? It's, a, it's, an, it's, an, it's the new language that uh, many are adopting. Uh, or a very well established language like Java and all the ecosystems around Java and what it's required by developers. Um, it's not just about programming languages, it's also about methodologies. Uh, before people were writing an application running on a single machine, then we start seeing client server type of methodologies, then multi tier, then Cloud. Now we're talking about containers, microservices. Each one of those have different needs, and we need to help those developers with their needs. 
And then there is yet another abstraction in all these uh, use cases, or what we call verticals. So you can imagine developers work in different industry segments. So there are the developers that work in uh, IoT, the IoT business, or the guys that work in the automotive, or uh, people that have to do with the big data, machine learning. Um, there are tons of it out there. And obviously, uh, developers that are facing the needs of uh, a data scientist, for example, has a very different need from uh, a developer that's um, an IoT developer working on some embedded system. What is our main goal with regards to technology is to offer what we call uh, day one experience. So making sure that uh, developers that are using our tools, our infrastructure, our frameworks uh, can have a pleasant experience to start with from day one, that, which means easy, uh, easy way to find the, the tools, what, being those packages, being those containers. Uh, many developers do not necessarily even care about the distinction. Uh, whether it's a container or a package or how do I get it installed on a distribution. They just care about using those. Uh, and obviously making sure that those tools are properly tested, properly validated, and again, paramount important is documentation. Uh, not everyone wants to dig into the code to see how something works. Um, many developers that we are addressing are not necessarily even uh, developers coming from a computer scientist perspective or background. Uh, a data scientist may not be a computer scientist at all. And how do we build this perception that we, we, we spoke at the beginning like about that we care about developers? How do we reach out to developers? Well. An idea that we have and that we're just basically bootstrapping these days is the developer portal. It's literally a web portal where developers can um, reach out to us, but also see what we are doing for them. Uh, in that regard, that web portal will contain trainings material, videos, recordings, uh, hopefully even videos that are recorded here or other conferences around technologies or about anything that has to do with uh, open source tools, infrastructure, frameworks. Uh, another thing that we are considering is to have uh, podcasts, vid uh, YouTube uh, videos, where people again can listen to the experts, matter experts in certain areas, and learn about technologies. Something else again uh, is the developer evangelists. So we need help. Uh, and there's nothing better than having people using our distribution like OpenSUSE talking about it, talking about technology, how you can improve it, how, we, how we're doing about it. Uh, tools that we have for OpenSUSE like the build, uh, build system, the build service, and how they, how others that are part of our uh, industry, but not part of our community. How can they easily integrate their applications with our tools? So talk about those, reach out to people, uh, and help others use what we develop. Another interesting aspect about the developer program is uh, the ecosystem alignment. So. We would like to basically make sure that we uh, drive the adoption of what we consider the onboarding levers. Uh, open source distributions is uh, the most important ones for us, uh, like being Tumbleweed, Leap, Cubic. Uh, and I, as I said, uh, and I discussed this with uh, some of you today, helping uh, people that are new to the open source world to build their application, to host their application, to create packages for their application. So that basically our ecosystem can only grow 
by doing that. Now, very, very briefly, I, I would like to, to talk to you about what we are doing from a technology perspective to address the, the first needs that we saw or that, that we feel are important for developers. So the, the, the first one, as I said, is the, the Go ecosystem. There are more and more applications being written in Go, some existing application being ported to Go. And um, th th there are caveats around it, above all for people like, uh, like us that would like to basically create packages to, in to have first-class citizens in the distribution. Uh, Go has the, 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 the caveats that uh, all dependencies are pulled, uh, has sources, and then built locally. Obviously, we know what are the, 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 the troubles with that. And for, for that reason, we are basically building a service in, in, uh, uh, in our build service that can help with uh, the module dependencies uh, and create requires in spec files based on the dependencies. So again, something that can help um, Go application developer understanding and getting closer to our environment. Uh, that effort is, uh, is uh, dr um, driven by Jeff Kowalczyk, which again is a, is a, a SUS employee. It's based in the US. The other one um, is tackling the Java ecosystem. And uh, that is done by Friedrich, which I see here in the room. It's just sitting there. Um, he's, been, he's been working on basically making sure that we can have uh, Maven working in, in OBS, bootstrapped in OBS, took a lot of effort to, to, to make it working. Uh, and I suppose there's still a lot to be done. Uh, what's, what is, uh, is to do with, uh, with the Java ecosystem is it's, it's really, really cool that uh, you know, a Java developer on his own machine you know, has Maven and can real basically have all these dependencies automatically sorted out by the infrastructure. But uh, once again, it becomes much more complicated when we want to do this in OBS. For all the reasons that we all know, and they're all very good reasons, but we need to address those needs. Um, the other one um, is Vagrant. Uh, Vagrant is, has been uh, pretty much the de facto standard in uh, up, upstream open source communities for uh, accessing uh, VMs boxes on the fly. It's also integrated in many upstream projects like in Jenkins pipeline to basically test on different distribution specific third party applications. And so, when we looked at that, we thought that it would be really cool if we could basically address this need in, uh, and building it up in our own pipeline that we already have in, uh, in the build system to make sure that every time, for example, a tumbleweed image creates a snapshot or a tumbleweed Im image uh, has a snapshot created, we also get a new vagrant image. And that's exactly what's happening these days. Um, the box that is produced is also fully tested in the Jenkins pipeline. And then if all tests pass, the, the newly box gets linked automatically to HashiCorp Vagrant Cloud. So whoever uses Vagrant these days can do the magic Vagrant init, Vagrant up, Vagrant SSH, and it gets a new tumbleweed image in no time. It's pretty handy. It's pretty cool. And it makes the uh, experience from a developer perspective much easier because now developers can uh, test and can also not necessarily just test but also develop with our distributions in literally five minutes. And then there is uh, one, once again another uh, item that we are interested in. It's the WSL, it's the Windows subsystem for Linux. Why we're interested in it is because it's really helping us to build that um, bridge that these days a lot of developers use Windows as a, as a desktop machine where they basically use their um, development tools, IDEs on Windows. And then in the past they had to, to, to use specific other um, tools or infrastructure to deploy or try out their application on Linux. WSL is somehow 
bridging that gap and helping us and 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 we can basically show how cool it could be to run application on Linux once again. So finally, a uh, few, few takeaways. Well, we are the new kingmakers uh, in the industry. It has been recognized that decisions that before were pushed from uh, top to bottom around IT, or around, around processes, uh, and how to do things, that direction has changed. Um, now, high level management is listening to developers because they are the ones using the technology. They are the ones that are on, on the field using them, understanding them better. And so we are finally being listened to. Uh, and l one last thing, please reach out. Uh, we have our ideas about how to improve developer experience on our distributions, but um, I cannot know everything. Uh, so it's very important that you let us know, write me, ping me, I'm on free nodes, my email, you saw it before, with ideas, with pain points. Uh, what would you like to see? What do you think is not working today? And we just want to make it things better for you, all of you and all of us. Thank you. If you have any questions, I think a couple of minutes. Mark, a quick question. How many of the developer tools are cross-platform, uh, both from an architecture perspective but also from an OS perspective? So rather than limiting it, you know, how can we make sure that what we work on, the tools that we have available, can work across as wide an area as possible? Uh, I would say we're doing a pretty good job in that perspective already. Um, most of the tools should, should be and are platform agnostic, per se. Uh, I think what we could do better at is to um, possibly work on the performance aspect of how tools behave on different platforms. Uh, and hopefully we can work with people like yourself to understand platforms better, to make things working better on, on specific platforms. But as such, I think we already have um, the very good attitude to always make sure that tools are built for uh, uh, x86 or ARM platform or PowerPC, etc. Do you know if Vagrant is multi-platform? Is that x86 only? Which one? Vagrant. It is. It is multi-platform. Yes. We, we have bots for x86 and ARM, yeah. Thank you.